Oh, my days. Birds are chirping in the background. The sun is about to rise. It's a lovely setting, isn't it? It's a lovely setting, but there is nothing lovely about Chelsea Football Club at the moment. Lots going on. Media seems to have changed their tune in regards to Grand Potter. It looks like we're entering the end game. So let's talk about this. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Look, yeah, as I said, I think I think we're definitely entering the end game at the moment. The tune of some of these journalists have definitely changed. Uh, it seems like the upcoming two matches, Leeds and Dortmund, this is it. This is it. This is Judgment Day for Graham Potter. And um, to be honest, I don't know why we've, we are still waiting for the last two games. I mean, should have we should have pulled the plug a long time ago. And uh, we definitely should have pulled the plug by Southampton. I don't know what benefit it there is to, to wait around for the Leeds game. I mean, I guess we are absolutely waiting and giving Graham Potter every single chance to turn this around, which is fair enough. I personally don't think at the moment he can turn this around anymore. I, I actually genuinely feel we are going to lose to Leeds at home at Stamford Bridge. Only for the sense, because I think majority of the players I get this vibe, they've just lost faith in Graham Potter. When you're on two out of 16 record, you just, yeah, there's there's no more. There's no more comeback from there. Well, players definitely at this point, I'm pretty certain, are talking amongst each other and just thinking, do you know what? Like, this guy's got to go. This, this guy's got to go. And there's apparently some rift between the owners as well. You know, maybe one of the owners want Grand Potter gone and another owner wants Top, uh, what, another owner, Top Bowley, possibly wants Grand Potter to stay in. But... As I said, Judgment Day is upon us for Grand Potter, Leeds game. If we lose to Leeds, I don't see any point why you want to give him Dortmund, but there could be there could be the Dortmund trial as well. Um, it doesn't make sense. For me, you know, losing to Leeds and losing to Dortmund, especially Dortmund, you know, getting eliminated from the Champions League, it doesn't make sense to get rid of Grand Potter at that stage because at that point, you've lost everything. There's nothing to look forward to. So you might as well just keep. It makes total sense to get rid now, absolute total sense to get rid now and just bring in someone who's capable of you know, turning this ship around. And who that might be, look, I definitely don't want a secondary manager. None of these Thomas Frank from Brentford and this, that, the other, uh, not even Poch, if I'm being absolutely honest. I want someone who's proven, who's won stuff. At this moment, definitely would even take Jose Mourinho. Yeah, he's, he's got a history with this club and... With these level of players, I'm pretty sure he'll get a tune out of it. But, you know, Hansi Flick, Luis Enrique, all of these particular managers have a winning history. So let's have a look at what Mr. Orni is saying. Uh, this is his latest, I believe, uh, article dropped about less than 12 hours ago. This was a quote from it. Grand Potter is going to have to show signs of process. Chelsea are clear that they are backing him, but they do not want to see, uh, but they do want to see progress. And at the moment, Chelsea are regressing. 100% we're regressing. 100% we're regressing. There are a number of players that want to leave. We'll talk about Raheem Sterling also at the moment. Seems like he's keen to move on as well. Um, Kovacic is the latest one that we rumored to possibly go to Manchester City and many more, many more. Um, some may look at it as a positive sense because we do need to get rid of a lot of players. Our squad is bloated and it does have a detrimental effect when a lot of players on a consistent basis don't get to feature in, in matches and then you know they're going to create a chaos. Um, it's too difficult to keep everyone happy and I feel like at the moment sometimes Grand Potter is trying to keep almost everyone happy and he's failing to keep anyone happy so yeah you know as i've continuously said great that he's abolished Aubameyang. Uh, i don't agree with that i think he probably should be one of the players that should feature up front uh, and maybe habits needs to be abolished to be honest and this is the thing grand potter hasn't taken the liberty to get the right mm -hmm. players out of the squad he's on a genuine basis you know getting the wrong players um out of the squad you know there shouldn't be any space for players like Havertz there shouldn't be any place for players like Conor Gallagher 
and to a certain degree even Mason Mount, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, definitely. And then, you know, you try and make sure that, that those spots are taken adequately in the team. But yeah, look, at the moment, Chelsea are regressing. Uh, that's just from a standpoint of who you select for matches. I think tactically as well, um, every time second half, we are outplayed. Every match, we are outplayed. Our energy seems to be there for the first 15 to about 25 minutes. After that, it all saps out. We tend to execute some sort of a plan in the first probably 25 minutes or so. And then that all goes down the drain. Substitutions are probably not that great either to create any sort of impact. So, and which player, which player can we actually say underground Potter has actually done well? There's no one stands out. Not a single player stands out. And um, yeah, now, you know, injury to Thiago Silva as well, which I'm worried. I'm worried. Who's going to be the leader? Who are the leaders of this team? Everyone else is so young. You know, we're missing that experienced leader. We got rid of Jorginho. Aspilicueta is a bit part player. Um, and Thiago Silva is potentially out for five to six weeks. So, look, the morale undoubtedly would be down. Undoubtedly would be down. And I wouldn't be one bit surprised if the players are going to down tools against Leeds just to get rid of this particular gaffer. Um, and, and even after that, if the owners don't do that, then I would have to say the owners are mad. The owners are absolutely mad. And I think if it does get to that point, I hope the owners sit down with the entire board and actually come up with a collective sense of who the next manager should be. Because what they did last summer by bringing in Graham Potter and, and giving him an exuberant contract five-year contract, 12 million a year. That's stupidity, pure stupidity. Because now you're you've 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 done yourself financially, you've absolutely screwed yourself. So we're in a massive mess. We're in a massive mess. And this is why I've been beating the drums in the last few months that only wins can change this around. Only wins. And the more you have, you know, these records of two out of 14, two out of 15, mm -hmm. two out of 16, and potentially now we're looking at two out of 17. It's not looking good, Bav. It's not looking good. So look, David Einstein, he's probably one of the journalists that I'd believe out there. And he's saying that, look, Chelsea are still backing Graham Potter, which I find very, very insane. But fair enough. Kudos to the owners um, to be able to uh, continually back Graham Potter. But at the same time, they do want to see progress. And the moment, Chelsea are re regressing. And I think we are entering the end game. Now, Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the Chelsea squad have their scheduled day off today due to no game midweek. The Blues will return to training to, uh, to prepare tomorrow to prepare for the clash against Leeds on Saturday. So, look, more days off than goals scored in the month of February, uh, which is quite embarrassing. I get it. I get these scheduled days off. I understand. But surely, Grand Potter... You can turn that around. You can you can actually turn around and say, hey, guys, I don't think it's wise to have a day off. Let's come together. Let's try and work on our chemistry. Let's try and work on our gameplay. Let's try and let's try and see what we can do to improve. You know, off the back of a loss, I don't know if it's ideal to then go away on a day off. Like you'd want to get together and ensure that you've you've got it all down packed. I mean. We did the same thing against Southampton. We did now. Now we're doing the same thing, you know, off the back of a loss against uh, Spurs. I mean, it sounds ridiculous. Like lose and you get a solid day off. Like this is why probably some of the players have lost faith. You know, the, the, it just there is this vibe of mediocrity at the moment. There is this vibe of accepting continued continuing losses. Do you know what I mean? Accepting this habit of losing on a week-to-week -week basis. I can't believe this is Chelsea Football Club. I honestly cannot believe this is Chelsea Football Club. I said off the back of the Southampton loss, maybe just get the players together. and You don't necessarily have to train, but at least talk. What's going on? Apparently, Graham Potter has had one-on-ones with everyone and everything seems to be fine. Everyone seems to be supporting. One-on-one -on -one is one thing, but maybe have group conversations. Maybe it's time to talk in a group and see how the group feels. Look, another day off. They're going to be back um, you know, tomorrow to start training for Leeds. 
Whereas Leeds, I wonder how many days off they're getting, you know, battling for the relegation. Um, look, they're going to come out all guns blazing. They're going to come out all guns blazing, and I hope we can match them. And I don't know. I just get the vibe that we're just not up for it. We're just not up for it, ladies and gentlemen. And this is why I feel like we should have we should have got ridden uh, of, of uh, Graham Potter a long time ago. It's just, it's a, it's a massive decline. It's a nosedive at the moment. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Law. Look at this. Madness from Matt Law, but I'm not surprised. Um, look at what he's suggesting. This is his opinion. No problems. Chelsea's best two performance this season, AC Milan home and away, in my opinion. But both games through and front three of Mount, Aubameyang and Sterling. That front three has not started together since Milan away, which is wrong. Uh, it's, it's gotten time. Um, against Man United since then. I'd like to see Potter go with it for Leeds game and go back to a back three. Look, in recent times, we've talked about a back three. I've, my my last two previews have been back threes. Um, that I agree with, but start Mount. <laughs> so what does this mean? Bench Jao Felix. Yeah. yeah. At the moment, he's definitely one of our best attacking outlets. Um, you know, what about Mudrik? What about Madueke? Like, you don't buy all of these players and splash all that money and, and, and bench them, especially Jao Felix, especially Jao Felix, who's on a loan, short-term loan, and we've paid a handsome sum of money. Anything to fit Mason Mount. I can't believe, he, like, where, where's the opinion of this brother saying, Mount's just not been good enough. Perhaps he needs to get sold. He hasn't been good enough for a very long time. That front three, Aubameyang, Mount and Sterling, really. Sure, it worked against AC Milan. Uh, we've come a long way since AC Milan. Things are extremely poor now. Extremely poor. I find it funny how Matt Law, anything to squeeze in Mount. I mean, I don't I don't mind the Sterling and Aubameyang shout, if I'm being absolutely honest. And with Mount as well, like I thought he was a number eight. Why are you trying to pencil him down as a as a you know a forward? Potentially, he's going to be a right-sided forward because Sterling is he. Sterling potentially will take the left side. Maybe he might take the right. Mount will take the left. But Obba's a player that is abolished from the team. Even if they do reinstate Obba Miang back, is he going to try his hardest? I don't think he will. And this is the conundrum Graham Potter finds himself in. You've abolished a particular player. And now that it's not working out, and you probably are thinking about making a change, maybe not play Havertz and play Aubameyang up front. What's it to say that Aubameyang is just not going to try anymore? Because you've disrespected him. You really have. So all of a sudden now you want to bring him back into the team to help you get out of this mess. He's probably going to do his level best to ensure that you get sacked. It's not going to be wise to depend on Aubameyang anymore. And you're stuck. You're stuck. Do you know what I mean? You're absolutely stuck. You're going to have to continue with Kai Havertz. And Kai Havertz has been dropping stinkers. As simple as that. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what your thoughts are with this particular opinion piece on uh, in, from, from Matt Law. Um, wanting to start Aubameyang, Sterling, and Mount and, and give that a chance. Give that a chance. Absolute madness. Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this particular news segment. Smash up the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Let me know. Let me know how you feel about, you know, Chelsea regressing under Graham Potter, uh, potentially getting the next two games as, you know, the final judgment call. And, yeah, another day off. And, and that front three. And that, you know, let me know if you're going to give that a shot. Till next time, everyone. Take care. See ya.